And we're live. Episode 14. Kevin, kick us off. What is up, everybody? How we doing? How we feeling? Welcome to another episode, episode 14 of the Final Vibe Podcast. 14 episodes. I can't believe it. Some people said it couldn't be done, but here we are recording the fourth one. Who told you that it couldn't Nobody be done? Nobody told me that, but what if they did? They would have been wrong. Anyway, my name is Kevin Reapin. Alongside me is my co-host, Andrew White. Hi, hi. Feels good. Love hi. podcasting. We do love podcasting. Happy Thursday to you. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Friday Eve. Uh, anyway, Final Vibe is all about your pursuit of legacy, and this podcast explores all aspects of life and legacy through discussions with all walks of life, but not today. Today is just another solo episode with the two of us. Whoa, don't downplay it. I shouldn't downplay it, but we're not discussing life with anybody other than us, but maybe a couple people will listen. No, I think a lot of people are going to listen. I think it's going to be one of those things where people look back and say episode 14 was the catalyst for everything that Final Vibe ever became. Right. Like so, we'll like inscri- we'll get tattoos that say episode 14. Absolutely. And then the date. Yep. September 4th, yep. Thursday. That's what I think. Kevin, what if we jump into uh, some updates? Let's do it. Let's, let's tell yeah, let's tell the people how we're coming along with our own goals and if they've changed. So biking. Yeah. You're a biker. You're a cyclist. Apparently, yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Tell us what's going on. How far have you gone? August was a beautiful month for biking. I accomplished a lot. I hit a 100K, which is 62 miles. I did that. And then the next weekend, I did 70 miles. I went to Sedalia and uh, hung out with our friend Adam, Final Vibe member, Adam Tilly and his wife, Kaylin. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. And so that was 70 miles. Um, I didn't know this, but from Boonville to Sedalia is all uphill. So, oh, no. Yeah. That's, what? How, how far is that stretch? Or that was the whole ride? No, that's about... 40 miles. One, it's 1,000 feet over 40 miles. But if you look at it on an elevation chart, it is just nonstop. So that's So it's like a slow burn incline. It's not like ups and downs. Right. Nasty. Yeah. So I think when I do 100 miles, I'm going to start in Sedalia and go the other way. So I'm just downhill for the first 40 miles. Genius. Yeah. Don't tell people that though. <laughs> we'll I cut that. Cut that out. Um, so then, yeah, August was great. Uh, September, a little bit more of a rough start. I got new tires. Mm. Uh, they were tubeless tires, and this is a, apparently allows you to have a punctured tire. It'll fill itself, and you can keep moving. Yeah, talk guru to me. Yeah, they're a little lighter. Uh, they're tricky to install, so I had someone install them at the bike shop, Cycle X. I was all excited. The bike looked good. It felt good. I made it 18 miles, and then my back tire just exploded. It's like a two-and-a-half-inch gash. Woof. Right in the tire. So I had to walk. Um, Jacqueline came and picked me up after I walked about a mile in my biking shoes. Took the bike to the bike shop. They said there probably wasn't much they could do, but I do have good news. They reached out to the tire manufacturer, and they are going to replace the tire free of charge because apparently this is happening all the time. Oh, and it's like a recall. Yeah, kind of like a recall. It's like whenever you go to Chipotle. Well, crap. I didn't mean to blast Chipotle. <laughs> didn't they have something like that, though, where like everything, like something was killing everybody? And I think they had something with their lettuce for a yeah, while. Yeah, the lettuce. Yeah, it's yeah, always the lettuce. Never really. trust the lettuce. Never do that. Or okay, the, cool. Yeah. So... um. I just today picked up my bike. They put the old tires back on because the new tires out of stock for two weeks. I'm going to try to get back on. on I was going to say, when are you back at it? I should be back at it Saturday or Sunday morning because I had to take a week and a half off. I will probably do maybe like 50 miles, see how I'm feeling. And then the plan is to do it 100 in the month of September. Oh, no joke. This is the month. This is the month. That was going to be my next question is when do we just quit flirting with all these 50 60 70 when did we just go for it also are you gonna do like a 95 as like a warm-up or, or, or no. at some point are you just saying we're just going in when you look at the training manuals training guides they say that whenever you can do 70 comfortably you can do 100 you can push yourself and the same is true when you do like marathon training or half marathon training there's typically a place where maybe 70 75 percent of the total mileage goal when you can do that and feel good yeah this makes sense yeah that way you're not running a marathon during a training session and taking right. some of the excitement. So I think physically I can do it. When I got to Sedalia, I think I could have done 30 more. That took six hours, six and a half hours. Um, so again, that's the most difficult part for me is the sitting there for that long. But mm. I can do it. I, I was going to say, what do you think the most unique challenge, in your opinion, about those thirty last 30 miles? Is it going to be the quad burn? Is it going to be the mental fortitude? I mean, is it going to be blisters on your feet or is there something I'm not even thinking about here? No, I think from a physical standpoint, I can do it. Um, the quad burns a little bit. As long as I stretch every 15 or 20 miles, I'm okay, uh, which is like every hour or so. 
uh, and eat and drink enough. So the challenging part will be my goal is to go the opposite way that I typically go to do 100 so I can go towards St. Louis. The challenge is going to be that past Jeff City, I'm going to have no idea what's in front of me. Ooh, uncharted territory? Uncharted territory. That's That's kind of attractive, though. It is, and that's why I'm doing it. But the problem is when I go the other way, there's a couple gas stations and bathrooms and things that are always there that I can count on. And that won't be, I don't know if that's the other way. I don't think it is. I like that, though. I hope it's fine. <laughs> I mean, whenever the first pirates launched the ship into the ocean it's to figure point. out whether or not the earth was flat, do you think they had gas stations <laughs> they could rely on? I don't think they did. I don't think they'd probably did. They probably didn't. Wow, did they all die like of scurvy? I think Maybe they, they did. I think they may have, but we'll see what happens to me. But that's a, that's a great way. That's what I'll be thinking about on my way. I do have uh, my plan. This is going to take some logistical planning, but I think it would be fun if my grandma could meet me maybe for the last 20 to 15 miles and ride alongside me. For Your the grandma end. rides bikes? She does ride bikes. No. Oh, yeah. 20 plus miles at a time. What? Yeah. So she met me. She just turned 75 on Sunday. What? Yeah. So Gma Jan, we're going to have her on the episode. Gma Jan? Gma Jan. Unbelievable. She sounds like a celebrity. She, uh, I think everybody's going to get to meet her. We're going to have her on. I'm, I'm totally. We'll have her on the next month or two. That'd be sweet. I mean, I've said this a couple of times behind the scenes, but- I think it would be hilarious and awesome. This is not supposed to be a dig at the elderly. We get some old people on the podcast. Yeah, That's amazing. It. I think so. Well, we're talking about legacy. I think that it's it's only right that we talked about some people who have yeah. done a few more things than we have. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, if we can figure out a way for her to tag along at the end, that will help me for sure get through some of those more challenging. Dude, miles. that's such a that's so funny. I can't wait. Hey, can I vlog your experience? You can. It'll be a, another logistical nightmare to figure out how to do some of that, but I think we can have some fun with it. Yeah, no, I think if I just get some sort of like uh, rocket propelled scooter, then I'll be good. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. And you have the electric bike. That'd be sweet. I do have the electric bike. You can come could with be me. fun. Could, could be, be fun. Good. Wait a minute. Why are we talking about vlogging? Oh, Kevin, right. did you did you release your first vlog? I don't know if you knew that. I'm a vlogger. Oh, yeah. what's your vlogger name? It's Kevin Reap. Okay. Yeah. For now, Sounds it's Kevin good. Reap. I think, yeah, I was, th- I mean, do I need to come up with another name for I something? I don't think so. I don't think I do. So I stuck with Kevin Reap. And we talked about the name a little bit, and, and we won't beat around the bush. It's not uh, It's not the most attractive last name in the world, but it's my last name. So we're going to roll with it. Kevin, it's your name. It's my name. You own that name. I do. And uh, so Kevin Reap is the YouTube channel. First vlog is live. I'm hoping to do one or two a week. That's amazing. So I'm going to put a pin in that. And I'm going to ask you some specific questions. Okay. I think the vlogging thing, we could easily glaze over that and be like, oh, whatever, you know, it's just another part of Final Vibe. It is, but it, in my opinion, it's a big deal. Was it kind of scary putting yourself out there on a camera? It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, much like a lot of these things with Final Vibe, where I have now put myself, I've, I've made some jumps that I did not think I would have normally done. I look at vlogging as the same way, and I uh, people say that you need to do I mean, if you do the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same result, right? I mm-hmm. think, and I believe in that. So, um, when I was looking at the goals that I'm trying to accomplish professionally and personally, some of those included being a little more open about my life and the decisions I make and what I do in the background. I think that that transparency can be good for a lot of great things. And if I'm living the final five lifestyle, sharing a vlog of that will just be a great example of what Final Vibe is. So I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so that being said, that's what's in the back of my mind when I'm taking the camera out and I'm putting it on the table at the restaurant. And uh, maybe people are looking, maybe they're not. But at the end of the day, I think that what I'm trying to do is a positive thing. Um, I've had to come to terms with it that I'm a vlogger now, but I like it. Here's Here's how I look at it. If we knew, let's say our grandpas had the opportunity to vlog at 28, 29 years old, and they didn't, I would be pretty bummed. Yeah, it's a, it's, it would have been a big wasted opportunity. Yeah. I mean, not that I needed them to do it every day, but it would have been cool to look back on. Just a little something. A little something. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. We touched on this last week, but I mean, people, they're, they're lost to history now. And, and I'm not like afraid of being lost to history because I think that's a very inevitable reality. But I mean, if you can, if you can give the next generation something... I mean, that's so cool. I mean, if you, and this is going to sound so stupid, but can you imagine if the Egyptians had been vlogging? We would know how the pyramids were built. <laughs> We'd have a we lot wouldn't of have any questions. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. it's really, really strange when you think about the future and everything that this, it's like a gateway technology. 
to like better truth. Yep. You know, we won't 100%. have to be wondering. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. It's, it's documenting my life and, um, we'll see what comes from it. But my goal is just to give, uh, a brief glimpse at what my life looks like. Yeah. I want to put bullet holes through this idea too, that being a vlogger has to be, uh, in inherently narcissistic. Cause I think a lot of people are like, Oh my gosh, like who really cares? You know, like, I don't care what you eat for breakfast. I don't care when you take your dog for a walk, but it's totally more than that. And if you can, if you can create a brand around your personality, I mean, that's going to play out, play out well for you both, I think in your personal life and for business, you know what I mean? And I think we can be transparent that we think these will be good entrepreneurial moves. You know, it's not totally a passion project. Right. Let's, uh, let's pivot off the word entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, uh, switch over to one of your goals, which is to, uh, grow ivory as a business. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. Talk about your own goals. Yep. Ivory fitness for anyone tuning in for the first time. Ivory fitness is a body recomposition coaching business that my good friend, Josh, my and I founded on January 1st of 2019. And yeah, you're right, Kevin, we are trying to grow that thing. Uh, to be all the things we want it to be. I mean, it's just like any startup, you want to see it grow and flourish in all the most exciting ways. Um, Things are taking off a little bit. Clients are coming through. Uh, I think we've really settled into a good online presence. We're posting regularly and we're like pressing into those startup disciplines more than we ever have. So it's good vibes right now. Sweet. Good vibes. I love it. I think the, and I want to point out the reason why we talk about these goals and these updates is because it's a, an important part of an introduction to Final Vibe. And I think people might be listening and they're like, they, they've, if they've listened to a few of these episodes, they know that we are trying to hold ourselves accountable by talking about these things uh, and inspiring other people. But I think it's important that if you're listening and you make your own goal like this, and it can be, you can use social media or some other channel to update others on what your own goal is and hold yourself accountable and accomplish cool things. That's why we do this. Totally, and I'll even go, I'll even take it a step further and I'm going to talk about what I'm calling hashtag mission mortgage. So basically, I'm all about I'm all about specific goals, right? I don't I don't think that ambiguous goals are worth too much for too long because at some point you just need something specific to spur you on to that bigger goal. So uh, I'm trying to get to a point where I get my client load up to a point where uh, Alexa and I, my wife, can pay our mortgage 100% every single month with revenue from ivory coaching specifically. Boom. That's, that's my goal. That I can't, I'm trying to come up with a way to express how big of a deal that is, but it's such a big deal. I think you're going to do it and it's going to be, that, that's like a life changing moment when it happens. It's cool too, because you know, it's extra right now. I, I don't want to pretend for a second that ivory is my full-time gig. It's just not, you know, and that's the beauty of a startup. And I'm not going to be that guy who's pretending like, you know, he's just rolling in the dough from the fitness coaching lifestyle. It's totally not true. It's been a slow burn, but the clients that I do have are amazing. We're getting amazing results. And um, yeah, I guess where I was going with that is it's exciting that I'm still working full time, you know, and I can do this on the side for now. Yeah. And we'll see where it goes. Kevin, you have something up your sleeve entrepreneurially. I do. I do. Will you tell us about it? This is a, this, I think this is yet another idea inspired by you. <clears throat> oh boy. No boy is right. Uh, look where you've gotten me. Um, in the next few days, weeks, I don't know, by the time maybe people are hearing this. No, 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 not weeks. Days. 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 In the Kevin, next few days. No, no, no. You just tell us when. Tomorrow. Speak it into existence. All right, let's, tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Friday? I'm down. You tomorrow. can't drop stuff on a Friday. It's, well, here's, here's not, yeah, not on Labor Day weekend. True. That's, Dude, just, just. We're going to drop it right after the podcast. Tonight? No, no, no. After Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday yeah, morning. Because yeah, Labor Day weekend, everybody, yeah, no one's paying attention to you. Right, right, right. Or me or anyone. That wasn't a dig. Right. <laughs> yeah, no hard feelings. Okay, well, I got a couple of posts I need to delete. Everyone's just, more, literally everyone is mourning the death of summer. So now is not the time. That's true. But that's Tuesday a, that's is not, the time. That's hilarious. On Tuesday, we will be launching. I say we. Mm-hmm. And this fiber channel is going to be where people can go if they're looking for a voiceover actor who can make a fantastic project for whatever marketing 
gig they're they're working on. Kevin, I have two questions. First of all, what the heck is Fiverr? That's a great question. And how do you spell it? Yeah, Fiverr is spelled F I V E R R. Of course, they had to, you know. Um, is this a website? It is a website. Okay. I think there's also an, an app, and it is a website where people can go when they are looking to find someone who can do a creative task for them, yeah. or whether it be design a logo or make a song right. or record a video or make a presentation or something. If you're looking yeah. for someone to help you. Skill work. Exactly. And over the course of my lifetime, I've received many, many nice compliments about my voice. You sure have. And it took about like the 10th person to say, you should, do you, you work with your voice for a living, right? You do something with your voice. And when you say no to that question a lot, eventually you start like, should I, why am I not doing that? Right. That's a pretty sweet. I mean, how many judgmental looks can you push through before you say, I need to do something with this gift? That's right. That's a, that, And that's where I'm at. And here we are. And here we are because you pushed me off the ledge to do it. And we're going to work together because I think uh, we as a team from a, from a voice, but then also what you can do from an EQ standpoint, we can create some pretty sweet stuff. You might even be able to drop the ad, the, the Fiverr commercial audio right here, right oh, now. Oh, do you think we should do it right now? Hit him. Hi, you've reached Kevin Reap. I can't come to the phone right now because I'm busy recording my promo for Fiverr. I'm brand new to the site, but bring years of experience, professionalism, and the speed you need to make the best voiceover you've ever heard. You've ever Whether heard. you're looking for a radio commercial, TV spot, audiobook, podcast intro, or anything in between, I think I've got the voice you need to share your message confidently with your target audience. I work alongside music producer Wes White to edit and EQ your project to perfection, and we will always guarantee your complete satisfaction. If if you're looking to make a statement with your next project, a strong voice is where it all begins. I look forward to working with you. Leave a message and I'll get right back to you. See, oh, that's pretty dope. That is dope. That's, that's going to smack. The most amazing thing about it is that I did the the actual words in one take. One take, Jake. We've recorded it a few times since then, but I was just sitting in front of the microphone and I had this idea after listening to a few of the, the other voiceovers that are voiceover actors that are on Fiverr. And I thought it'd be funny because the ultimate goal is that they listen and send me a message. So I should do a voicemail. So I just got on the mic and said, hi, you've reached Kevin Reap. I can't come to the phone right now. I thought it was so funny, <laughs> dude. I, because here's the reality. Let's just tell the people how it is. If you get on Fiverr, I mean, we had a pretty hilarious time fishing through some of these profiles. We sure did. Some of the most successful voiceover dudes have some combination of whack presentation of their brand so it was either a terrible thumbnail or a goofy picture we saw some people with good business who didn't even have the photo cropped right right five thousand orders what are we doing <laughs> right what are we even doing yes yeah, so we're gonna try to dabble and see what we can do no we're gonna do more than dabble this we're, is a takeover <laughs> we're gonna take over the, the voiceover voiceover world we really are so seriously kevin's probably too bashful to say this and good for him because humility is a fine character trait but if you want this man's voice on your project, on your company, on your commercial, on your podcast, anything, don't be bashful. Go to Fiverr, look up Kevin Reap. Yeah, and we're going to tag team this thing. Also, Kevin, I think one unique thing we bring is that tandem relationship. You're the voice, and I'm the engineering. Yeah, yeah. We're the one-stop shop. It's the two-hit punch, one-stop shop, everything you need. And one last thing, we are offering custom music which right. I legitimately don't think anybody else is doing unless I'm a crazy person. Uh, not that we saw. Not that we saw. That's and what we, we fished through the We fished through the best ones. Yeah. So I think what we're putting together, what we're, what we're getting ready to drop will be, uh, it's a pretty niche thing. I can't imagine a ton of people listening need a voiceover actor, but I'm still excited to dabble in a, a little bit and see, uh, see how far of a reach we can get the voice to. Totally. Movie trailer, that's the goal. Oh, why not? I want a Marvel movie. That's why we do this podcast, because we say crazy things, and then we hold ourselves accountable to that. That's right. Yeah, next week you'll be like... I'm actually writing it down on the notepad that you gave me for this podcast. Movie trailer. Movie trailer. doesn't need to be Marvel. That seems like a big goal. But let's try a movie trailer. We can keep it semi-generic for now. I think movie trailer is specific enough. Yeah, maybe but I could I do like a think, Sundance movie, you know? Okay, maybe. I was thinking more like Michael Bay. Oh, wow. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Dial it back a little bit. I just bit feel like that's your vibe. Okay. I'm feeling like fantasy tech future. Yeah, I get it. That's I think we should we you. should just make up some totally fake commercials. And that's next on our list. Well, we totally are. Yeah, we got to cake out the profile. Yeah, it'll be fun to make. We should make them like funny, but then like legit. So like you laugh, but you you get it. 
Yeah, if you guys if you guys have any ideas, let us know. We, right now we have the voicemail that you heard. I think of I think a a comical but also very well produced movie trailer would be cheeky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, what else could we do? We could do like a uh, live brainstorm sesh. Yeah, we could just uh, I wish we could do phone calls. We could have people calling right now with ideas. I think we do a, a local service radio commercial. Yep, yeah, yeah. Keep it local. There's a couple of those in town that are very popular. Steve's Pest Control, for example. And we could, you know, maybe Steve's we- Pest Control. Da na na. So maybe we just pick a business and we'll make one for them. That'd be fun. I actually know people that have done that. Uh, they've been like, hey, you're a st- it's, it has to be the right business, right? The the business that's sort of starting to blossom and they're sort of getting to that level where they're like, oh, yeah, like marketing should be more on my radar. Where I know a videographer who just like took sick B-roll of an anonymous place in town, presented it to the manager and he was like, how much? <laughs> That's genius. It's just what you got to do if you want to yeah. grind, man. I just, so many people just miss that. I made a website once for a hotel before I talked to them. Yes. And I know uh, that. They said no. No, no, no. This, this oh, is a different, a different hotel. one. <laughs> yeah. This one didn't work. Was it super seedy? Uh, no, it was a nice website, but then I sent it to them and they were, they said, this looks really great, but not at this time. And I was like, oh, dang. And Fair I didn't enough. have the energy to try it again. But Fair enough. still, uh, yeah, you should, that's a great way to get, to get your name in the door for sure. Sometimes you totally got to give a little before you get some. Totally agree. Love it. That's our Fiverr update. That's cool. And, you know, final vibe. Is there something that you're thinking about right now that you've wanted to do? Not you, Kevin. I'm talking to the people. Sure. Don't answer. This is rhetorical. Is there something that you've been thinking about doing that you just want to do but you're scared? Man, I just encourage you to do it because you know, you're never going to be not scared. Yeah. Now is the perfect time. Or maybe you're just lazy. Could be that. Could be Could that be a little for bit of both. sure. So, Could be a nice blend. A nice blend. Kevin, let's transition over. Let's talk about apparel. Let's talk about t-shirts and coffee. Yeah, not a whole bunch of updates here, but we I just want to make uh, make it known that we did get a fresh batch of the Heather Gray logo shirts in. So if you want to rock Final Vibe in your day-to-day life, a uh, t-shirt is a great way to do that. And if you check it out on our website, we've got a couple of colors and options. We'll add more, but the shipping is free and we got t-shirts. And then we picked up last week a fresh batch of the Camacho Coffee Final Vibe blend. And if you are in... Columbia, Missouri, we do same day delivery. So just put the put your address in there. It's like thirteen bucks a bag, and then we will bring you a bag of coffee. Imagine someday. wanting a bag of coffee, and then telling us that you want a bag of coffee, and then having that bag of coffee in the same it. day. It's better than Amazon Prime. Have you received any reviews about the coffee? It's funny you ask, Kevin. I don't know if you're teeing me up here like we're playing softball with beach balls, but. Um, yes. And this is actually a hundred percent authentic, legitimate. It's going to sound like we're scratching our own backs. And I certainly don't mean to do that because really Jesse from Camacho is the man to credit here. But my half brother who you have referred to as my cousin and my nephew, I think that's not true. Just cousin. Did I make that up? (laughs) My half brother, uh, he has not been able to drink coffee. I don't know for how long, but for a while, I don't know if it's been years. I think it's been years due to some medical issues uh, because it it just has him go into the restroom too many times in the night. Cannot drink coffee. Loves coffee. Misses coffee. My mother bought a bag and shared it with him. I don't even really know what possessed him to try it because coffee has been off. It's been off the table for so long. He tried it and he doesn't have the issues. And what's crazy too, and I haven't told you this, but he has been telling his urologist he's been telling his physician and it's on their radars and now he doesn't live here in Colombia, but in this mysterious place where he does live it's kind of circulating that's legit yeah it's really that's kind of huge. crazy because because it's really nothing to do with <laughs> final vibe right. and everything to do with jesse and his brewing abilities right from camacho coffee correct so yes. let the credit be to jesse 100 percent. but it is cool that final vibe is associated and, and i said too and i was like well you know, half brother, nameless half brother. You might try some of the other flavors too, just because I don't want to be the guy who's, you know, that's not what I'm about. Right. I'm not trying to hog that. Sure. There's other flavors. But he said, no, I only want this. This works. And I'm pressing forward. Wow. 
That's and so uh, and I he, and last time we spoke, he was planning on jumping on that subscription game, which you can do. Kevin, yeah. can you get a subscription to the coffee? You sure can. Okay. A two or a four week subscription. So if you drink coffee as much as I do, you sign up for the two weeks, and you'll get well, you'll get it. You'll have a bag in a box on your front porch every two weeks, and then you can also do the monthly. That saves you a couple bucks per bag, and then you don't even have to think about it. So wherever you are, you'll just have Fonda Vibe Coffee. Yeah. On your front porch. Cool. Very cool. cool. Very cool. Kevin, I think you have an update too about the Slack channel. Yeah, we just wanted to touch on Slack. We get a lot of questions about what Final Vibe membership is and how you can get more from Final Vibe if people are listening and kind of curious about what this all is. In my opinion, the greatest asset to a membership will be access to our Slack server. So this is a place where we invite members who join Final Vibe and it's essentially a social media channel for all of us to come together. You can share text, images, videos, links, the whole thing. Um, leave responses, private messages between members, the whole thing. It's fantastic. Um, and we're seeing it pick up a lot, which is awesome now that we have a handful of members and that have joined Final Vibe. And I just wanted to call attention to it. If you spend all day on Twitter, Facebook, it's not hard to get sucked into the negativity and just the terribleness that is social media. Um, and, and our goal is as this continues to grow, that Slack becomes that alternative where you can go and you know you're just going to see people asking you uh, tough questions that make you think, sharing cool things that they've done, their own updates on goals and, and cool photos. And I think that when you wake up and you check this and you saw that Adam accomplished a goal and Cole's doing cool stuff and Alexa did a cool thing, then it's just motivating and it'll get you fired up to do your own thing. Totally agree. I like to think of it as a chance that you have in any moment of any day to step into a better room. I literally think of it as a room. I know it's social. I know it's a social platform. I love but it. But if you are that person who's getting dragged down by negativity or just stress in general, or maybe even you're actually not surrounded by a lot of people that motivate you, that's what the Slack is for because everybody's getting it in the Slack. That's what I love about it. It's just instant vibes. So let's shift gears to some listener questions. We asked some folks on Instagram. Uh, we asked our followers on Instagram to ask questions that we could answer on the solo episode and we got some feedback. We got some good questions. We got some good questions. I'm looking at these. These are funny. I like these. Let's start with Coles. He says, what would be the number one piece of advice that you would give to yourself at 18 years old? Yeah. Kevin, go ahead. What would you say? Well, I think that I, when I was 18, I was a very nervous person. I was always worried about decisions I was about to make. Um, and I would tell myself to be less worried about the things that I cannot control. That's something that I've learned to wrap my mind around probably five years ago. And it has helped me tremendously. And if I had learned that at 18 years old, uh, I think I would have been in a healthier place then. Uh, but yeah, just there's things that you can't control. And every second that you spend losing sleep or pacing around a room for those reasons is a total waste. It's so good to hear you say that because so many people are struggling with that and I don't want to minimize that struggle in people's lives because I know that this is where mental health gets involved and I always want to be sensitive to that. It's not something that I've ever personally dealt with, but it's cool to hear you say that you did deal with it and now you're on the other side and the grass is for sure greener. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. 100%. What kind of fruits do you think come from that? Like why is your life more enhanced? now that you're not doing that. I think you have a more clear mind whenever you're worried about the things you can control because you have a better idea of what you can do, what you can accomplish. So when I'm about to make a large decision in life or something bad has happened, I will take a step back and think about what aspects of this I can actually manage in the short term, middle, long term. What can I do to actively make this a different situation um, or a better situation or take advantage of the situation? Uh, so it just opens my eyes more. Yeah, and I think too, if I may chime in, because I have a few thoughts on this as well. I know this is your half of the question, but to me, worrying about things that you can't control is nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. And I'm not trying to poke at people who do that because I understand it's a real struggle. But to me, it just doesn't make any sense because nothing can come from that. If you know for a fact that you can't control something and you continue to dwell on it negatively, you are absolutely just wasting time and time is so precious to me. So precious, especially, sure. I think, especially for me and you, because we have 
these passion projects. We have brands. We're doing things. Arguably, we're too thin spread sometimes. And it's like, man, if I'm worrying even for five minutes when I could be cranking out a blog post, cranking out an Instagram story, filming a YouTube shot, what a waste, right? in my opinion. For sure. And I'm not 100% over this. I mean, obviously, I've shared, sure. I've shared from a health standpoint that that all came differently to me. What I'm talking about is more of a professional side of um, from a career standpoint, what I worry about in, in that aspect. Of totally. It. Totally. Love that. How about yourself? What would I say? Oh, man, I love this question because I, I think the years that I regret most in my life are 18 to 22 is college. It's even weird, and I guess I'll just say this on the podcast, but even being on campus, because I still live here, you and I live here in Columbia, Missouri, being on Mizzou's campus makes me feel this melancholy nostalgia for what I didn't do. 18 years old was maybe the weirdest year for me because obviously you're just graduating high school. You're supposed to be launching into this really exciting time in college if you're fortunate enough to be able to go to college. I decided to go to Mizzou. It's the only place I applied. I grew up loving Mizzou. It was supposed to be awesome. But for some reason, I was just so burned out on high school because I pushed myself so hard academically that I just didn't have any positive energy for college. So given that brief backstory, what I would say to myself is maximize the moment in specific ways, probably relationships, make more friends. Dude, I just didn't meet that many people freshman year of college. I didn't go out. Uh, I didn't, I didn't hang out with people. I didn't talk to people in class. I didn't hang out with people in my dorm. Like I was very much a recluse. And if you know me now, that probably sounds really weird because I probably seem very extroverted, but that's, that's one thing I would say. And the other thing I would say is, uh, just, just do the things that you're passionate about and think a little bit more long-term. I think in college, you're so focused on getting the grade, studying for the test, and that's good, right? Because that is that is the point of college. But man, I wish I had started a YouTube channel in college or I wish I had started a side business doing this or that or really anything. But I was just so short-sighted at the time that right. I, didn't, I didn't have any perspective as a young person. I talk to students in college all day, every day. And that is something that I always try to share with them is that as difficult as it is to look beyond senior year of college, if you can make decisions today from a higher place, just like we talk about with Final Vibe, you can set yourself up in college for so much success later on. So you I can too. I mean, yeah, it's it's personal to me, obviously. But I see people doing this in their 30s, though, man. People who are just kind of on autopilot. I guess that's what it comes down to. Don't just be on autopilot. If you want to be on autopilot because that's the life you enjoy, so be it. But don't be unknowingly wasting your life. That sucks. Yeah. Cool. Question number two, Sarah, would you rather fight 100 duck sized horses or one horse sized duck? I think I have to say the 100 duck sized horses. I know that's, that's a lot, but that's a stressful scene in my mind. Yeah. Once I said a hundred out loud, I'm realizing how many that would be, but a duck is a, could be aggressive and a horse is huge. Yeah. So you're saying that it's the it's the worst a, of both worlds. I think a duck sized horse uh, horse sized I think a horse sized duck more terrifying could kill you. Yeah. Then a hundred small ones will just you know. You know what? You know what my answer is? Give me the big duck. Big duck? You I want the big him? duck. This is why. I grew up playing games like Mario. I was gonna Wario, say the boss. give me the boss. <laughs> We've all seen the big duck. And it's one on one. It's like the revenant whenever he gets racked by the grizzly bear. Yeah. I'm not getting racked. No. All right. The duck's getting racked. I would love to see it. Yeah, bring it on. Try to set that up for us, Sarah. I like that. Yeah. All right. Number three, Ethan. What I is think this the... is a good question for you. Uh oh. I don't know. Maybe not. Ethan asks, What's the hardest thing to do when podcasting? And I feel like you're doing a lot of the technical side. And uh, Ethan is a final vibe listener and is actually thinking about dabbling in his own podcast. Why is he just thinking about it? I think he's actually, you saw, he's the the guy that we shared his Final Vibe wallpapers on our Instagram account. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. He's got Those were mic. actually he's, sick, by the way. Pretty dope, yeah. So that looked awesome. Um, 
Final Vibe wallpaper is, by the way, available on our website if you want to rep Final Vibe on your phones or your computer. But he's getting ready to start a podcast. So I think we could answer this oh, okay. from yeah, a yeah, technical yeah. standpoint Got and it. also from, a, from an interviewing standpoint. Right, right, right. Kevin, why don't you tackle the interviewing side and then I'll, I'll banter a little bit about the technical side. Yeah, I would say one of the – it's not a challenge. It, it, it'll take some work, but we'll sit down, Andrew and I will, and, and we have a paper in front of us with 10 to 15 questions listed out. And as much as you want to ask those questions because you like them and they, they're going to point you to places you want to go, sometimes they don't make sense for the guests that you're talking to and the answer that they provide. So you got to be able to adapt real quick and, and think of a different question or scratch. There's times where a guest will answer three questions and Andrew and I will just exit off those three questions and it's like, okay, now we got to come up with something else. You do. Uh, so you just got to be thinking on your feet and come prepared, but then be prepared to not be prepared. I think that's actually a really good point. That's a really good point. If I were to speak to the interviewing side, I would say be prepared enough, but don't be so rigid that you you force the script. Right. Let let people be people, and if there's a better conversation to happen organically off script, go there. Yeah, you know, go yeah. there. In my opinion, how about a technical side? To the technical side of things, the hardest thing to do in podcasting. Oh man, without using words that nobody will care about. Um, I think what will set podcasts apart is the quality. So you are going to have to make a financial investment with microphones. You are going to have to make a financial investment with recording software. You are probably going to have to have a decent to good laptop. So there's a certain hardness in air quotes just about making that commitment. But it's such good accountability. And you and I know that now because every time you spend a dime, you pay a little bit more a little bit more attention to where that dime went. You know what I mean? Yep. In terms of more specific stuff, it's a skill set. You have to learn how to EQ audio. You have to you have to learn how to pull out nasty frequencies and you have to learn how to uh, embellish the better frequencies. You have to give color to the sound. You have to learn how to compress things. You have to learn how to edit out awkward moments. You know, it's all those things and I don't I don't mean to discourage anybody from doing it because there are there are plenty of people who are doing podcasts who aren't paying attention to any of that. And to some extent, the content matters most. And I get that. But what a nice ribbon on top of the podcast gift if you can give your listeners a very pleasurable listening experience. 100%. That was beautifully said. Wow, thanks. Well done. I appreciate that. Yeah, so those were our listener questions. And we'll try to post on Instagram before we go live. But if you do have a question or something's on your mind, this is actually worth sharing, I guess, every episode. My, I think so. My email is kevin at finalvibe.com. And if you email, that'll go to both of us. And we will, we're going to get Andrew an email address. And we will be able to, if you have questions or, or thoughts or anything that you want us to know about, that is probably the best way to, to get it in front of us. And also, let's just, I know a lot of people say that, like, email us. No, you should actually do that. Like, we will actually get back to you. Yeah, we would love that. Your question will be on the podcast. I, I actually have... I'm a Patreon supporter for another podcast that I believe in a lot and I get to ask questions because I'm a Patreon supporter and they always say, and this week our question comes from Andrew White and he's British and so it's probably like this and I just get hyped hearing my name on a podcast. You can get hyped too. Yeah, we'll do it. We will read your name and your question or your thoughts unless they're negative and then we won't. Then yeah, we'll, don't be that person. I'm just kidding. If you have, if you have feedback for us, we would also love that. Why not? Yeah. Let us know what your thoughts are. Put it in the digital comment box, a.k.a. your email. Yeah. If it's a bad thing, email it to us. If it's a good thing, leave it on iTunes with the five stars. Totally, totally, totally. Okay, phase three of this podcast, because we're chunking this one, yeah, right? We're giving people a little bit of structure here. We've got topics. And one of the things that you and I discussed when we were like, how do we make these solo episodes valuable to people? Let's just Let's just talk about topics that are meaningful within the final vibe wake. So what's topic number one, Kevin? Topic number one is setting yourself up for success on a day-to-day -day basis and what that can look like. And I wrote an example that's kind of silly. My best man mentioned it in my wedding um, during his speech because it's that silly. But I used to, in college, run every morning. And I had a routine down where when I got back, I would have cereal. And the night before, I would lay out my running stuff in a bowl and I would put the spoon next to the bowl and he gave me a lot of trouble because that's a silly thing that you don't necessarily need to do. It doesn't save you any time. 
but it made what I was doing more, more, there was more of a regimen to it. And that's what I needed at that time. So I set that up and every night I would prepare my morning to be as easy as possible. There was no chance I was going to open up the drawer and not have a spoon or a bowl. And that was just a problem I was going to avoid. That's a small example. But no, I like it, but it's good. Yeah, and I do as many of those as I can, and I still try to do those things so that your day, the parts that you can control, the small things, if those go smoothly, you have an ability to do a lot of other bigger things. Right, and here's the thing. So when I was thinking about these topics and how can we bring people value, the temptation is to think, what sort of life-changing nuggets can I give every single week? Not realistic. So we're bringing these tiny little things that you can bring to your life. Cereal and spoon the night before. Yeah. I think too, the nuance here is you have to figure out what's best for your life. So like, don't hear Kevin say, if you want to be a more productive person, set out your cereal gear the night before. It's not the point. The point is what is your life like? What is going to set you up for optimal productivity the day, the next day? Do that thing. So what could that be? I think that if there's something you dislike doing in the morning. I think mornings are a big time to, to make as efficient as possible and to make as little friction points as possible. So what can you do, uh, to just make some, some of those smaller moments better. And I think that the food meal prep, the meal prep movement is taking off because people are now realizing this is extremely easy. And I did uh, one night is going to be cooking. I'm going to put music on and I'm just going to cook five pounds of beef and then the other six nights I'm going to do something else yep. because dinner's ready to roll. So that's a big one. I think that, um, is, is obviously it's gaining traction. I think that is the reason why. Totally. And I think another thing too is, um, even the night before just making a to do list for the next day. Yep. I think it's kind of crazy that some people just wake up on a day and they say, well, I wonder what I'll do today. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of like attractive in a very, like free flowing way, but like, man, that just doesn't fit my life right now. Right. And there are also days where I will keep, I will block off specific days and try to do nothing for full days at a time. And I've talked about this in a blog in the past that I, I know how I function where I will go 24 seven for two weeks and then I will disappear off the face of the earth for two days. Work hard, play hard. Exactly. Rest hard. So that's, that's, uh, that's kind of my mentality for things. Um, so there are days where I will do the opposite of blocking off a day and putting nothing on my calendar. And I will put everything on my calendar, bike ride, shower, and I'll try to see a day. And I just do this occasionally, maybe once a week or a couple times a month. Um, and I'll see if I can do that. I will make the night before the next day's calendar, something that I will be so proud of if I do it. Oh yeah. I like that a lot. You know, like a five thirty to 10 PM nonstop. You put rest times in there, you put the Netflix show in there, but you, document every moment. Yep. And then you commit on that Tuesday night, that Sunday night, whatever it is, that the next day you're going to check every single box off that calendar. You're going to feel really good at 10 p.m. Oh my gosh. And I've had those days where you get into bed and you 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 had that moment when your head hits the pillow and you were like, that was a wild day. Yeah. But it was perfect. Yeah. And, I, took- and I executed. Mm-hmm. And even if it wasn't perfect in terms of like how things went for you, adjust the adversity. Be proud of yourself for the way that you neg- you navigated a negative thing. You know, it's not going to be perfect in the sense that the stars align for you every single day. But like in terms of how you respond to the day and execute your tasks, you can be perfect if you want to be. Yeah, and that's cool. Yeah, so I would, I think dabbling with the calendar can help as well. Like you said, review it the night before, but then don't don't hesitate to put some lofty things on your calendar outside of your work, outside of whatever else and try to accomplish some of those those things. For sure. I'm going to throw one more helpful nugget in here on the food-related note. Most times before bed, I will plug my breakfast into my fitness pal before I go to bed so yes, that I wake yeah. up and I know exactly what I'm about because that first meal, in my opinion, really sets a tone for the day. If you, So I work with people that are trying to lose body fat, and sometimes they'd be like, yeah, this, for, for breakfast this morning, I had cereal, and I know that I shouldn't have had cereal. And to me, it's like... I get it, but there's just no reason that you should settle for cereal when you could have had an option that more directly impacts your goal. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, for example, for me, 
Keep it simple. High protein breakfast. Just have a shake. If you want to be that person, just have a shake. If you want to have eggs, do that. Or protein pudding. I've been making protein pudding in the morning with berries. Salted caramel protein pudding with berries. That it's been a smash. I haven't had dinner yet. That sounds delicious. It feels like dessert for breakfast. It's like 242 calories. It'll have you cruising into the afternoon feeling satiated. But yeah, that's one cool thing you can do. Kevin, well, topic B. Oh, did you want to go somewhere else? No, this is perfect. All right, so the second topic we want to press into is your day starts off on the wrong foot, in air quotes. How do you pivot? That's a big one, I think, because like you said, the first meal of the day kind of sets the tone from from that aspect of health, but then so does the the morning set the tone for the rest of the day. So what do you do if you find yourself in that 10, 11 o'clock hour and you're just like, everything's making you mad and you know it's not going to be one of those days where your head hits the pillow? I think those are the days where if you can pull yourself out and you can still turn those days into positive days, you're going to see some progress in, your, in the ultimate goals that you're trying to accomplish. Um, so I like this question, this thought, because it's important. I don't think a lot of people are able to do this well, and it does take practice. Um, for me, I have a few things in my back pocket that can flip a switch and make me in a better mood. Specific songs, specific video games, YouTube channels. There's a podcast that I love that is not serious in any way, shape, or form. It's like three middle-aged guys. It's called Tell Them Steve Dave. I love that podcast. I save episodes for these moments because no matter what, it's going to zoom me out. And I'm going to zoom into these three guys that are sitting around a poker table talking about comic books and what it's like to live in New York City. Something that I just, I don't know, I love to listen to. You just to. get to be a fly on the wall. Fly on the wall. I love it. So I have these things in my back pocket that I will go to. Uh, I'll go for a drive and listen to a couple songs that I dig. And then when I get back, typically I will, some, most of the time, find myself in a different mindset. I like that. You just have to have your pool of resources that yeah. you know are going to sort of bring you back to what you're trying to be about. It's like back in the day, the Nike running app used to have a button on it to play your power song. So you could take your phone out, you do probably your iPod touch, and you would push power song and it would play the song that you put in the settings right before you got to the big hill or whatever. That's how I look at this. Dang, that's a cool idea. I didn't know that. Yeah, I loved it. I don't know. I don't think they do. I don't even know if they I'm sure there still is a Nike running app. I use the Apple Watch watch app. But yeah. anyway, what is that thing for you, that right. that power button um, that can get you from a bad mood to a good mood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's good. I'm trying to think of what I do. So this is going to sound cliche, but I'm not a huge believer in having bad days. I think negative things can sort of come your way. So be it. Again, this goes back to what is in your control and what isn't in your control. All I can do is react. You know what I mean? It's like life is a game of Frogger. You get across the street and the cars are coming. You're going to get hit every once in a while, you know, but it's all about how you bounce back. So for me, I think it really is just tapping into that mental place that says all I can do is react in the most productive way possible. And that's that's what I do. And I do have a few things like I, I, I love YouTube. I think people are going to get the vibe that I love YouTube. And there are some YouTubers that I will just go on their channel and I feel like I get to hang out with them, you know, for seven minutes. And it's just good vibes for me personally, but not, it won't be for everybody. So yeah, I think it's all about just finding out what's good for you. Yeah. Let's shift gears another topic and talk about decisions. This is a fun, uh, fun exercise. Let's talk about decisions that we've made in our life and how we came to those decisions and the turning points of our lives. What, what came from those decisions, if that makes sense? Makes a lot of sense. And, I'll go uh, first since that's a big question. Yeah, go ahead. So I have a long list of moments in my life where I've gone a different direction than I expected. I think a big one, obviously, for me is going from high school to the University of Missouri in Columbia. At the time, I had only been one time. I had no, no idea what college entailed, but I knew that it was the next step. Um, but it was a decision that I made knowing that it would provide me an opportunity to go elsewhere, take another step after college. And I could, I would have plenty of time and plenty of opportunities to go elsewhere. So I chose Mizzou when I first went there. 
the first semester, I did very, very little. And I quickly realized that that wasn't going to get me to that place where I could have a moment to, to leap to a different, bigger opportunity after college if I was just going to sit there and play Call of Duty all day. So second semester of freshman year is when I started to get involved. That's when I got involved in the social fraternity that we're a part of. That's how you and I met. That's when you and I met um, in Bucks. So that's a big moment for me, I think, deciding to go to college out of the city. It was a big learning moment for me. I become an adult, I think, when the first time your parents drop you off after moving and you're kind of an adult. So I would put college as a cliche one. No, but was there was there another option that you were considering? I was considering different schools and I was considering smaller schools yeah. that, that were less intimidating, but very much more niche to specific right. uh specific careers that I would not have gone into later. So uh, that's one of the big reasons why I chose Mizzou was for those options. Um, so for me, that was a big one. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I think uh, one thing I'm going to, do you want to go back and forth? Yeah, let's do that. Let's go back and forth. <sighs> I think one meaningful decision in my life that changed the trajectory of kind of who I would become, especially when it comes to, uh, business endeavors and, and creativity and marketing and branding and all those things is I was at the time trying to develop my West White music brand as a producer of like digital music, uh, dance hall, tropical house, all that. I was kind of on the, I was on the musician kick. I was on the DJ vibes. And I realized that I needed incredible photos. I don't really know why looking back, it's hard to say like why I decided to do that. But basically, I reached out to a, a photographer friend who had done photos for me in the past, just in the studio. And I said, let's go somewhere exotic and take photos because I knew he did that. He said to me, I'm going to be in Iceland in two weeks by myself, just taking drone footage of Iceland. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, that sounds insane. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. Let's do it. And I'm really not that spontaneous of a person at the time. But in that moment, I was. I st I had a full time job. I I asked for the vacation days. I took them. I got on a plane with just a carry on item. So I think that's it's kind of it's it makes the whole experience feel a little hipster. But I just didn't have a lot of money. Right. So I got on the plane with a carry on item to Iceland. Um, I land there. I'm wearing like all of my clothes on the plane, right? Because you have to. We went there, we drove around in a rental car that was super tiny, a little Euro car, super tiny, and we ate mainly cocoa puffs and peanut butter. We slept in the car. It was $19 for the, for the cocoa puffs. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, they were very expensive. We went to Ikea. We slept in the car. We slept in the car We got because I couldn't afford a hostel. And we went to Ikea. It's cold, right, in Iceland? It's cold. Right. So in a car, you're going to need something. We went to Ikea. I bought a $17, very, very thin blanket and a very, very tiny pillow. Oh, my gosh. And we, we slept in our coats in the car, but we got amazing, beautiful photos. And the reason I bring all this up is it was just one of those moments where it was just, man, just do the thing. Just go do the thing. So many times we're paralyzed by fear. We're paralyzed by having too many options in life. Just go do a thing. Yeah. If it seems super irresponsible, think twice about it. But if it just sounds like an adventure, just go do it. And I think that changed the trajectory of how I thought about who Wes White or Andrew White was going to be from that move, that moment forward. Beautiful. And the photos are nuts. The Have photos are sick. Yeah, I was going to say, we're using one right now. Fontavibe.com, it'll be the first photo you see at the very top. Not Photoshop, people. Yeah, a lot of people see that and they're like, oh, they're using another uh, stock photo. Stock photo. Nope. Not a stock photo. That's nope. me on the black sand beaches of Iceland. Insane. Felt like another planet. It looks like another planet. Kevin, what's number two for you? I would stick, I'm going to stick with the Mizzou theme. Um, when I was a junior in college, I had an opportunity to get, uh, I needed an internship and I could have gone anywhere in the country, but I had a unique opportunity at the university running the social media for campus dining services. And that was a big decision for me because I decided in that moment that I was going to probably pass up opportunities to go to New York or Chicago after graduation and do the business, the big business thing. And I was going to commit to learning as much as I could. And I love Mizzou 
and I wanted to stay at Mizzou if I could. You made a hometown move. I made a hometown move. And this was after living here for like three years, which is crazy. But I did. I love Columbia then, now. But then I was, that's when I was like, I think I could do this. Um, and I firmly believe, and this has been taught to me by my mom, that if you, if you continue, if you just work at a high level and you do what, you, what is asked of you, good things are going to come your way a majority of the time. Um, so I have been doing that, I think, I hope, since that day. And that one internship that was supposed to be for one semester, it was kind of like a part-time job kind of thing that I was going to do uh, for a little bit of time, um, turned into a job that I have for the rest of my time in college, full-time job that I started the day after I graduated, turned into a larger marketing role at the university, and then allowed me my current role to shift into Mizzou Esports. So it's kind of a cool story in that I didn't do what a lot of my friends and colleagues were doing in the business school, which is go work for Warby Parker in Chicago. On it wasn't the, the sexy floor. move. It wasn't the sexy move. Um, but I, every day since, most days since, have given it my all and was proud of what I was producing for whoever I was working for. And that was a big decision at that time. And it's crazy when I sit here today and think about how this bizarre life that I live where certain moments stem from it. And that's the big one for me. Yeah, I was in the student center and Mike Weiss called and said, I can pay you eight bucks an hour. And I said, sure, let's do it. I knew he was going to call. So I was, I was already made the decision, but yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It is crazy. It was the genesis of what has now become a very cool thing. Yeah. You know, you run the esports program. Not it's, everybody gets to say that. Not everybody does. It's pretty dope. Which is very cool. Yeah. Uh, mine is, my second one would be very similar actually in that it was when I when Josh and I decided that we were going to birth Ivory Fitness. Because at the time, I felt very, very underqualified. And um, I felt like the fitness space was already very oversaturated. And I had all these excuses about why it was a bad idea. Everybody's got a fitness Instagram. Anybody can do that. Everybody is doing that. But then for whatever reason, we kind of said we're going to do it. And looking back, it's so funny. We had no idea what we were doing. If you go back and look at our profile on Instagram, our very first picture, we are sitting in my guest room against a wall trying to get like this awkward candid shot just so we could post something like, hey, we're going to do this big project. You know how everybody does. Everybody gets sure. hyped in the beginning. But it created, again, like just doing the thing required me to be accountable to it because I'm not the guy who's going to let projects fall unless there's a really good reason. And now Ivory Fitness is a thing. It's a business. It's paying some of my bills. It's growing and it's exciting. Had we not done that, wouldn't be here. And 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 largely I wouldn't be I wouldn't have this huge thing to apply the final vibe lifestyle toward. You know? That's be my, that'd be my number two. All right, Kevin, let's lighten it up. That's what we always do. That is let's, what we always do. Let's send people this is your special off. Thing. You know, it's just like if you can't if you can't be comical and lighthearted, you're just taking life a little bit too seriously. That's a very good point. We talk about a lot of serious things on this podcast, especially with the guests when we get down to the legacy and we just talk about some heavy yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So how often do you feel about death? Right. Yeah, but I think it's important that we also, and it's it's a good thing to point out, we're, we're positive people that realize that life can be fun and we have fun. We are. Yeah, so let's just do a little bit of rapid banter because I always enjoy it. Have you been to Panera recently? Yes. I How did was it? go recently. It was fine. It was, um, I'm not going to give any restaurant right now a negative review, I think, in the world of COVID from an in-person situation. I'll do it. No, you go ahead. <laughs> you, you, you'll, you'll rag on them? No, no, no. I don't know. I feel like everybody's short-staffed and doing their best. Um, but we went and I got their new steak. Sandwich? Oh, okay. They got a steak sandwich? I think. No, Southwest sandwich and then a Southwest salad. Okay. Southwest chicken, not steak. Okay. It was, it was good. Yeah. And then we got a, like a cherry pastry for 99 cents. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Because we got a soda, so you had that on for 99 cents. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've been. at the went to the one at the mall connected to the- Love the mall. Yeah. It's something. You love the Columbia Mall? Uh, no, I really don't care for malls too much. <laughs> they're great for people watching, but they're they're so odd. They are. Oh man, 
if we want to get funny, worst time of the year is when you're trying to get your Christmas shopping done Mm -hmm. and you're just getting badgered by the kiosk folks. Do they stop you? Do you stop for them? Oh, they, they're insane. Like the, the sea salt people, the sea salt lotion people. Yeah. But you go find them this year on Christmas. You go walk in there. She's going to try to sell you sea salt from the dead sea. It'll make your, it'll make your. Yeah. But you don't make eye contact with these people. No, I I feel so bad, but I ignore them as if their souls don't exist, but I have to do that. Do they exist? Physically, they are, they are people. They are. They are. All right. But. I can't be bothered. I can't do it. <laughs> Here's the deal. In the mall, you are typically walking to a store that you're interested in going to. These people are bringing something that you're not interested in to you. Terrible. Typically, it's a very weird thing. Do you know how that un- you have to rub on that your is? hands? Yeah, it's not really 2020. They you know got to stop that, right? Because aren't they? They're always like, "Let me rub this into your hands or check out how smooth my skin is." Oh. Their business has to be. It's trouble. so terrible. It's so terrible. I mean, but seriously, think about how un twenty twenty that is. I get on Amazon for my very specific item that shows up at my door two days later, mm-hmm. and yet I can go to the mall in person and be swarmed <laughs> by a flock of leeches, yeah, trying to sell me hair care products when all I want to go do is buy a candle, yeah, for Bath and Body. Right. It's an interesting business model. I wonder if somebody has to be. Somebody has to be making a lot of money doing it. I just don't know who. Yeah, I don't is. know. I don't know. Or maybe um, they're rolling more stuff out than we realize. Yeah, possibly. I had a thought. Okay. Off topic. I love Chick Fil A so much. Yes. How do you feel about their chocolate chip cookies? It's the best chocolate chip cookie. Oh. At any, if you had it, and somehow it's warm all the time. Like even when you get home, or you just, take it out of the fridge, <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> it's. I mean, I don't, I'm an exaggerator. People are going to learn that. I never do that. Everybody that I know knows that and people listening are going to figure it out that I exaggerate a lot. But when I say that the Chick-fil-A chocolate chip cookie is the best cookie in a fast food restaurant, there's not even a second place. Um, I mean, I could say other places that have chocolate chip cookies, but it wouldn't really make any sense. Well, where I'm going with this is we've been we've been hyping up this 10,000 calorie challenge, which will oh, for sure f- happen. Yes. Well, each according to Chick Fil A's website, every chocolate chip cookie is about 330 calories. Okay. So, doing a little bit of quick math, roughly 30 cookies gets you to 10k, which sounds doable. Yeah, I but, think so. But there's no way it's that easy, right? Can't be. No, there's a guy that I know. He was at Mizzou, knew him from high school. I won't say his name, but he did the carnival cookie challenge, and he was going to eat 50 of those carnival cookies that they used to have in the dorms, in the dining halls. Oh. Really small, right? Okay. You remember the cookies that you grab on the way out? Yeah, of course. 50. That's why everybody gets fat. Right. He said he was going to eat 50 of them in one sitting in like 15 minutes. They made it a big deal. There was a whole crowd. They filled up all of Plaza of his own video. They'd made a documentary for it. But anyway. They made a documentary. It was hilarious. They were going to do 50 cookies. And I remember thinking, that's that's not that. They're so small. Then he gets to like 30 and starts struggling. And those mm-hmm. cookies have, those cookies yeah. don't have the, the heft of the Chick-fil-A See, cookie. that's what I was thinking, man. They are hefty. So I actually hefty. went on a little bit of a bender a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I had six. No, you didn't. I did. Wow. This is what happened. So where I work, we get a lot of catering. <laughs> and sometimes... There's leftover Chick Fil A, and I take it. <laughs> and we, I just, I've been on a total chocolate chip cookie bender lately, mm-hmm. and I went six deep. Wow! And I could have gone farther. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I could have done twenty four more. But then again, if I start at six a.m., can I do it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. That's a separate video. The ten thousand, we got to get out and about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I know, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that we. We would never do that, but hey, maybe we make a sequel. Speaking of the 10,000 calorie challenge, I think, I don't know if we can put a date on it yet. I know one of the, th- we, we want to do it, but we want COVID to be less annoying annoying, so that we can go to restaurants and sit there. It would and, be nice. Yeah, it would be. If, yeah. So if we we'll, could sit there. We're hoping for maybe bike ride September, 10,000 calorie October. Yeah. And also my fat loss phase ends right at the beginning of October, my birthday is early October. My anniversary is early October. I have a photo shoot in early October. 
So clearly the time to smash 10K is mid I was going to say, let's do it after all of those things. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's send these people out of here. I think it's been a fun podcast. We got serious. We got lighthearted. And hopefully people are going to take a few meaningful nuggets out of their life so that they can pursue their own ideal legacy. I hope so. That's what we're here for. That is what we're here for. Kevin, can you give us an outro? I can do it. Don't forget, folks, if you're looking to change your life and focus more on your own legacy, a Final Vibe membership provides you with immediate access to a community of people doing just that, as well as plenty of other exclusive content. Today's episode was produced by co-host Andrew White. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to future episodes and tell a friend about us. We appreciate all the support we've received so far, and we hope to see you guys online. Final Vibe is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Final Vibe. You can see our website, apparel, coffee, and blog, and so much more at finalvibe.com. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll be back here next Tuesday for another episode of the Final Vibe Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Take it easy, folks. Enjoy your Tuesday. Tuesday.